A long, long time ago, there was an old man playing a nose flute. He was thinking about how to build a better house to live in. Suddenly, a giant hundred pace viper appeared. The viper said to the old man, Take a close look at my scales, and you can find the answer. The hundred pace viper's scales are just like slate. They mimic the viper's scales to pile the slates and to build the first slate house. Huh? But what does the hundred pace hmm. viper legend have to do with building a slate house that won't collapse? Everything. Slate houses are sturdy without using mud or nails because there is a lot of friction force in between slate pieces. If you put two books together by layering each page and then two people try to pull them apart, you will find that even if you pull with all your strength, you cannot manage to pull the books apart, no matter how hard you try. This is because the small frictional force of each page gets added together, creating a strong frictional force. It's the same principle when piling slates. The weight of the slate pieces and the frictional force of their surfaces are enough to stabilize the layered slate. And have you noticed that the way the pages of the books are layered is different from the placement of the slate pieces in the walls? The slate pieces are interlaced! That's right! That's why slate houses survive earthquakes and typhoons. The place where two slate pieces meet is the weakest spot of the whole structure. If the slate is laid down neatly, layer upon layer, then the weak spots are all in the same place, and the slate house will collapse easily with external force. By interlocking the slate pieces, the structural weak spots are dispersed. When a strong external force hits the interlocking slate, the external force also gets dispersed, so the slate pieces aren't easily shaken. That way, the structure doesn't collapse easily. I understand. The sturdiness of a slate house comes from the frictional force between the slate pieces and the interlocking layers of slate. 